Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have a, another viewer request video for you. So if you ever want a video, drop in the comments, I'll probably make it, uh, on showing how companies like Uber use Airflow for machine learning operations. Uh, so essentially what we're gonna do today is show you a Mimic pipeline um, from a, a Uber production diagram on how they do ML machine learning operations within Airflow. I'm gonna show you kind of a simplified example of how you can build an Airflow DAG to run and manage your Airflow pipelines just like they do, um, just like the pros. So it actually is a lot simpler than you might think because Airflow allows you to build in a lot of the logic like retries, having stateful you know, recognition of past runs and being able to say, hey, you know, I wanna check this run with this version because you can dynamically build those versions in. Um, so I'm gonna show you everything uh, that you need to do to make a production MLOps DAG. Um, without further ado, Let's get into it. And so the first thing we're gonna do is just create a new Airflow environment um, using the Astro CLI. So here, what we'll do is CD into desktop, data guy, ML ops, example, or it doesn't exist yet, so we're gonna then make directory, ML ops example, CD in there. And then we're gonna run Astro dev and and this will just create a local Airflow environment with everything I need to get started. Then I'm just gonna go open it up from my desktop here and we can start producing it. Uh, this is it, MLOps example, awesome. So now you can see I have my Airflow directory here on the left. And so first thing I'm gonna do is go to the requirements.txt file and include a few different uh, requirements. So it's basically just gonna be kind of a basics list of your you know, typical Python data manipulation packages. So we're gonna import pandas, we're gonna import numpy, uh, we're gonna import scikit-learn, so bring that over here. So scikit-learn is just has some actual machine learning models. I already had included scikit-learn, so putting pandas in here. Um, then also we're gonna import job lib, which is going to allow us to manage our jobs and our job libraries, pass in some libraries for even tasks, which is pretty critical with machine learning. And then Docker for dockerized uh, machine learning workflows. Um, and that's really it. Everything else will be dick will come from just kind of the base Airflow tooling. So time to start making our DAG. So we'll go to the DAGs folder, create a new DAGs file, mlops.py, and then we can start building our DAG. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is import a whole list of our different libraries and packages that we just uh, brought in. Uh, we're not gonna do them twice because that'll just cause an error. Uh, so here we have date time, importing date time and time delta. Then we're also importing pandas as PD, numpy as MP. If you don't know what pandas or numpy are, uh, go, this probably, video probably isn't for you. Uh, then you also have sklearn. Um, so this is where you're gonna select which model, uh, train test split. This will help us just split our data into trust, testing and training data sets. Then we're gonna use the random force classifier as our machine learning model of choice here. And then also use this metrics method to import accuracy score just to make scoring our models much easier as well. Then we have joblib and Docker. And Docker, so these are basically just to help us manage our you know, kind of distributed computing and then also have the image that we're gonna run on distributed computing from Docker. Uh, then we have decorators, uh, DAG and task. This would be using the task API for some of this. So we'll need to make sure that we have uh, the DAG decorators available. Then once we're done with that, we'll just set some default arguments. So here, just set owner as Uber, just for fun. Depends on pass, false, all these false retries. Change that if you want. Um, and then just a quick retry delay of five minutes uh, time delta there as well. Then we can start defining the DAG. So here we'll define our DAG. It's just, you know, default ours, comprehensive MLOps pipeline. Call it MLOps pipeline. And the first task we're gonna have here is just actually ingesting the data as you would in any MLOps task. Uh, so we'll have a task here, which we'll just call ingest data. And then within this task, we will uh, basically simulate data ingestion from a database or API. Um, so here you would br probably bring in a CSV or you know, bring a data from some kind of API um, just because I wanted to make this kind of a self-contained example that anyone can set up and run. I just wanted to make a random number generator, which I've, I've just been doing a lot recently for fun. Um, so here, what we're doing is just having a random feature, one and two, and then a t random target. Um, so essentially, just popping this is the random integers, and we're gonna see if our random forest classifier can actually establish any relationships here. So once we generate these uh, data points, we're just gonna save this as a CSV into our temporary return directory. If you wanted to really simulate 
production ML flow, you probably want to use object storage here, have something be accessible in a cloud bucket as just your intermediary storage between tasks. For small amounts of data, you can return it and then you know pick it up from a in the next task as an XCOM, but really not recommended when you're dealing with the scale of data that ML ops pipelines typically require. Um, so after you've ingested the data, we'll then pre-process it. Uh, and so to do that, we'll create a new task, pre-process data. And then what we'll do is we'll read in the data and then pre-process it. So here, I'll bring it all in and then we'll go through it together. So here we have our data, which we're just reading that CSV from that file path. So that's why we have this file path set up here, um, which is coming in from the previous uh, ingest data. So if we over save it or you are saving, you know, maybe dynamically creating many different data frames, you could actually have them all ingested dynamically. So I kind of want to show you, hey, well, this does seem simple and kind of overcomplicated. This is what you would actually do in production to make sure you have non-rigid linkings between these uh, tasks. So here you have data read that CSV, then you're simulating those data pre-processing steps. So here we're just multiplying feature one by two, um, and then just doing a log uh, on feature two as well. So again, we're just trying to make some fun dummy data. After we're done with that though, we're then gonna use, uh, we're gonna split the data, so into feature one and feature two. And then we're also going to set our target data. And now here, so this is where that train test split comes in handy. So instead of us having to actually go through the data and split it into like an 80-20 split, so when you're doing machine learning training, you're gonna want to split your data uh, sum into your, let's go over here. So some will be um, in your training data set, and then some will be used to actually test that training data set. Obviously, if you have any data that you're training it on that's in your testing data set, it's gonna kind of make the test really easy for that machine learning model. Um, so you gotta make sure that you do this kind of splitting step before you actually uh, test your data and, and run your model. So here we also have this random state. This will just randomize how your data is split so it's not just like the first 80%, then the next 20%. Uh, and then what we're doing after that is just saving all these two CSVs. So here we're again saving all these two, you know, X train, X test, Y train, Y test, um, and then create or sending them also an array of the different file paths that we're then going to use in our next task to understand where to pull that data from. So now that we have all of our data pre-processed, it's time to actually train the model. Um, so here what we're doing is we have a task here. Uh, we're going to create train model. So make sure we're in the right thing here. And then here we have our train model task. So here we're loading our training data. Pete just wrote in, reading that CSV, reading the CSV from our Y train and then training the model. So here we have our random forest classifier uh, and estimators. These are basically just configurations for the actual model itself. So don't worry too much about these. These are mainly just like how you would tweak it over time if you want to run different random states uh, to try and tweak for the accuracy. However, this is a random data set, so don't fixate too much on accuracy here. Um, and then what we're gonna do is fit that model and then save that fitted model into this joblib path. So here, joblib dump model and model path. And so what this is going to allow us to do is use joblib to actually run distributed computing here um, to run, in theory, um, our model on many different machines at once. That's why I brought in joblib and Docker because I wanted to simulate, hey, not just running this on a single machine, but how you would take this and then run it on a cluster of machines. Um, so this is you know, kind of an archaic example, but it does show you, you know, how you need to think about, you know, hey, when I'm moving from just running you know, my own little ML model to actually running this in production, these are some of the considerations you'll need to have. So now that we have the model path, we have our job of set up to actually train it, we're then going to validate the model. Um, so here, essentially what we're gonna do is just set up a task that's gonna allow us to read the test data, load the model that we just saved, make some predictions using that model, um, and then take the accuracy score of those predictions. Then once we're done with that, just return the model path and the accuracy predictions. So again, if you were running this with many different models in parallel, you could easily correlate, hey, the model path of model run 327 to the accuracy score of you know uh, 99%, right? And so then once we have our model validation task, our task defined, we're also going to define a task for deploying the model. So here we have deploy model, putting in the validation results from our previous task. So here model path and accuracy, 
And then what we're going to do is if our model exceeds a certain amount of accuracy, so over 80%, we're then going to actually deploy that model, and as you can see here, you know, tagging it, deploying with our Docker file, uh, and deploying our model uh, to then actually process our user data and make predictions on it. Um, so before, you know, that model is just basically you're doing that first test run. Only once it exceeds that threshold, it has that accuracy rating of you know over 80 percent. Obviously, this is a really bad threshold, so you probably want to have it like 95. Uh, then actually deploy it and start using it with real user data. Um, so this is just, you know, exactly what I want to show. Like, how do you take a model from just kind of a proof of concept and then have a mechanism for deploying it into production without, you know, always needing manual intervention? Here you have a semi-automated process for iterating through many different types of model configurations and saying, hey, these are the most accurate configurations, deploy these. Um, instead of needing to, like, independently monitor each of these workflow runs, say, hey, is this valid or not, um, et cetera, et cetera. So now we pretty much have our pipeline all set up and ready to run. So I'm going to start my Airflow environment um, with Astro Dev Start, and I will see you over there.